in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. So we my. Be glorified, be glorified for your grace and your hand. Say, Lord, my life will bring you glory. Forget about the mockers. Forget about what does not look like it yet in your life. Lord, find glory through my life. My life will give you glory, to bring you glory. My life will bring you glory. My life will bring you glory. I praise you. I praise you. Oh. I praise you. I praise you. One more time with faith in your heart. 
that forever you will be glorified in our lives forever you will be glorified in this house this remains a place where you will be glorified that men will continue to see your awe and your majesty in and through our lives thank you for making us signs and wonders epistles of your grace epistles of your majesty we thank you in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Hallelujah. For as long as you continue to embrace the person of the Holy Spirit, for as long as you continue to be childlike enough and allow his word to change you, I give you a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Your life will surprise you. It's true. It's true. It's true. The system for the lifting of men in the kingdom will never change. It will never be uniquely constructed just because of you. What you think about it or don't think about it makes no difference. The way, you see, God does not align to our terms. No. We are the ones who will humble ourselves and align to his ways. Are we together? If at all God is merciful, he stretches his hands to bring you not that he stretches to leave his position so the idea is not to invent your way you don't seek god at his terms it's pride and let me tell you something please listen to me many preachers are getting it wrong the way they are building people will frustrate them somewhere along the line it is true now i i must confess to you it is difficult to build people holistically it is very difficult because our individual callings you see the way god works with men is that because of his call upon your life he tilts you towards a dimension of himself and you will have to focus in that area to gain mastery the side effect of that focus is that you will trivialize other areas are we together now if god has called me into the ministry of healing for instance chances are that because of my focus my staying in that area all the books i read all the conferences i go to will be along the healing ministry chances are that i will pay little attention to leadership and administration because it has not been captured in my experience with god that is the reason why the unity of the body is important because seeking God in that way has a side effect but he created the unity of the body to give that balance now my refusal to align with the body will make me mentor people along a line and very soon you will see a pattern of deficiency in a particular dimension it was produced by we preachers so i can you can see people who are prosperous powerful but they have no regard for spiritual things no regard no intelligence no nothing excellence yes sir 
administration yes sir leadership yes sir prosperity as much as we know financially speaking yes sir but their spirits are it's unfortunate the knowledge of god zero passion for god zero evangelism zero conformity to the life and the character of christ zero every time you see a prevalent pattern within a people the communicators the shapers the molders of their understanding are to be blamed and so i admit to you as a man of god that it is difficult to build people holistically it's very difficult very difficult because sometimes you will have to go out of your natural inclination with god to supply that balance but it is worth it if you love people are you getting what i'm saying our passions are not only dependent on the holy spirit they are also dependent on our age ranges please listen carefully this is not what i'm teaching tonight i just want to express something a young man seeking god from between the ages of 10 to maybe 25 or 30 because of the the reality that most likely a major part of that young man's life in terms of needs and all of that is being there is usually someone who is helping him out with his decisions with resources are we together so it is justifiable that that young man does not seem to see any need in developing his mind and trying to make sure that resources are available for instance a man of 35 to 50 has his passions altered because children have come into the equation their development has come into the equation there are responsibilities at this point the implication of your life and your decisions no longer affect you alone they affect society is that true they affect the faith of another person they affect the destinies of the young ones that you are raising biologically or otherwise and then a man who is from 50 upwards his passions his interest is also different so you have to be careful you have to look at these factors in opening your spirit to be mentored are you listening to what i'm saying if i listen to a man of 65 years or 70 years he has a lot to tell me in terms of experience and knowledge but the truth is that it will be unfair for my desire and interest and passions to be forced to resonate with him i will find out that that conformity will affect my growth process are you getting what i'm saying so when god calls a man god does not only give you a message god gives you an age range where your message and ministry becomes effective most preachers don't know this if i preach to elderly people now of say maybe 60 years to 80 years let me tell you the truth they are not going to be touched by my message they will only be impressed that the things they learned old i learned young at the end of that message they won't stand up and say my i couldn't sleep no there is nothing i would tell them that is worth lacking sleep the mistake has been made the lessons have been learned their focus is on pouring their lives to a younger generation please listen to me don't hate anybody but be careful who mentors you because you will be a reproduction of not only the mindset but the interests the perspectives is important the bible says david served his generation served his generation a man can be talking to you who has estates a man can be talking to you who has 30 branches as a pastor a man can be talking to you who has raised sons and daughters around the world and the truth is he does not really have any need a man can be talking to you from the perspective of his sabbath he has entered his sabbath experientially there are some things that he will not have the time to teach you are we together they will be focusing 
on maintaining certain levels not helping you get there because he has arrived there and chances are that when you learn from him you will only maintain your current level he's teaching you maintenance not growth are we together the way i teach and guide people 10 15 years ago i'm still a young man but it's not the same context are we together people are married now they have families their needs are shifting their needs are changing so a young man can have a fellowship where 99 percent of the people are unmarried 99 percent are students just got admission the context of his teaching his example his emphasis i don't expect that kind of person to be teaching on love and relationship and all of that no the the messages in that kind of cycle should be very finite god the holy spirit pressing into god are we together there's no issue of counseling over love and relationship I, it's on seriousness at that level because the the epicenter of their pursuit should be god to know him but a good leader not just a man of god must be able to bring relevant teachings that align with the transitory processes of people's lives otherwise a time will come where your message may be powerful but no longer relevant you see people only stay under you when they can see the applicability of your messages not the power that is dispensed from them you will be surprised that your message can become so powerful but the context of your communication no longer fits those people so you must learn are you getting blessed I don't want you to fail in life spiritually and otherwise so my assignment is not just to bring the word of god the power of the holy ghost my assignment is to be sensitive and to bring the teachings as we all transition together are we together so that children will not come and you find out that in everything you've learned about god there was no provision to grow spiritually while taking care of your family then you have to live your spiritual life to take care of your family because the preacher did not tell you in his teaching you you know god based on his teaching only if you don't have children but now when you have children there is no system of incorporating other things and the pursuit of god when he was teaching you how to know god you were probably a student who had all the time but right now you are not only a worker you are a supervisor and he's still giving you the template of someone who has eight hours free to love god are you seeing that now and that may no longer work and you will feel guilty that because you could not do the things you were doing before the way you are doing them based on his interpretation he will make you feel you are backsliding not knowing that every face has a strategy for remaining spiritual are you getting what i'm saying now if you don't learn this a day will come certain quality of people will never come to your church because your message does not capture god as presented to people within that frame of influence remember he told elijah eat for the journey is far by the time you become a managing director who may be in a country just for two months in a whole year the man of God must be able to bring a strategy for spiritual growth that will give you the same result as an idle student who has eight hours in his disposal. Otherwise, you will find out that you apply your, your eight hours with God every day formula and you find out that you are knowing God but your company is crashing. And then you say, Kai, what is all this? Then he will tell you, leave the company and focus on God. Then you focus on God and find out that something about your life is becoming ineffective. Many believers are afraid because the things they used to do, the transitions in their lives, no longer afford them all the time again. I never would have believed that my life would be this busy and this occupied. Time is gold for me. You see that that means there must be a system of time redemption such that my spiritual life does not suffer 
and other things also will not suffer are you getting blessed so we have people who know God but they are not blessed we have people who get to a point and certain kinds of people cannot come to hear the word of God upon their lips the reason is because they do not have an applicable message or a pattern that ministers Christ to them being a man of God is not just having power and the ability to speak hallelujah I used to preach a lot faster than I do now but I came to a point where I had to ask myself what exactly is the purpose of preaching what is the purpose of communication and I found out that the purpose is understanding it is terrible to have people sit under you for many years and really never understand you you may be impressed by their shouting Woo! and you will be so flattered let me tell you the truth with all humility you see there are levels when God brings you to every point that you are under pressure to prove has been proven so settle down and build people you see that yes I will be a foolish person at this level of my life to be proving that the anointing of the spirit is upon me to be proving whether I have access to revelations or not it's not pride these realities have been proven the thing to prove now is the hand of God by the lives you raise now you can go on to a secondary school or a campus and see a young guy under pressure for someone to shout under the anointing because at that level he's seeking for validation so his pressure will be that the, if at the end of that meeting only two people fall he can go back and lock the door for three days say lord what happened that's the reason why you see people like papa Ia Deboe. they just come and say the lord bless you and i mean they are so not concerned whether you shout or not they, they know what they are giving you it's up to you to believe whether you have it or not someone can be falling in their presence and truly speaking you see that they are not interested the point has been proven you can't keep proving a point forever you must win yourself out of that childishness and focus on building people my pride now let me tell you this at the level God has brought me by his grace my pride is no longer my results my pride is your results if I celebrate my results now tea and bread See, everybody come and look God gave me tea it's a sign that I've failed God has been fair enough to me now my own result is your result are you seeing that now so my focus has shifted it's not just on myself God has helped me God has tried for me I will be wicked to still think about myself I don't go to preach and wondering will they give me honorarium and if yes how much will it be no no my heart God sees is that Lord you have helped me you have granted me understanding now Lord let your word prevail over your people you see that so that from nowhere a young man rises with a strange level of grace a family is able to capture dimensions of God that they can reveal you are finding purpose you are finding your place in life you are causing and stirring revivals across territories this for me is my joy a time must come fatherhood is not all about growing old it's all about pouring yourself into people and witnessing with all humility the consistency of the truths of God the truths of the kingdom that make men great are finite you can know them it is the pursuit of God that is infinite are you getting what I'm saying the, the keys that you need to piece together like you can get to a final year and your lecturer say you are finished you say I finished what you say you finished the course it doesn't mean you have finished learning but you have 
safely exhausted all that it takes to be awarded a certificate that can happen in the spirit that you can learn the things you need to know about certain things and god says now your message is clear your priority what keeps you fresh now is not just new revelations but the freshness of his presence that's why in old age you will still be fat and flourishing because you are planted are we together when you listen to papa deboe or you listen to benny hill and they talk the truth is that most of what they say will not necessarily be new to you but why do you receive it it comes with a freshness that 45 years of ministry has not eroded are you getting what i'm saying now yes god sees my heart i detest a ministry where only the man of god or the man of god and a few people they are the ones who are prayer warriors. They are the ones who are loving God. They are the ones who are conforming into his character. And then there is a, there are the masses of followers, as we call them, broke, weak, don't know God. And for many years, they remain loyal to that anointing. It's not God's way of doing things. Three years was enough for Jesus to build certain people. And after that, like the foxes of Samson, he released them. He said, guys, I know you want me to stay, but it is expedient that I go. Because it's time for you to be on the stage too. And did they succeed? They turned the world upside down. I look at a few people who God is helping. God is helping all of us. But I look at us and our spiritual results. I look at our financial results. I look at our results of influence and all and I'm telling you, my heart is gladdened. I know. I remain committed to helping you become something that you may not understand now or appreciate. But at the end of your life, I still say it again. You will stand back and watch yourself and say, God, so this is where you are going to take me to. Hallelujah pray in one minute say lord where i have not been attentive to you take away my pride take away that pride give me the grace my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from out of your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart it says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh within me rise let that Deborah let that Milka let that Hannah Rachel within me rise this is why I am here let that man of kingdom influence within me rise it is for your glory it is for your kingdom an heir as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed lord i will listen hallelujah Tonight I'm going to teach us briefly, just very briefly, just to prepare the ground for the seven days. By the way, please, I don't want you to miss any of these days. I'm, my heart is already excited because of what God is going to be doing. Your life will so change it will surprise you. We're going to be sharing mysteries 
and we are going to be praying one mystery per day that you handle and it just sets you on fire and we'll pray we're going to have a time of intense prayer praying in the spirit repositioning yourself times of encounters times of restoration of mantles of graces times of opening of new spiritual dimensions yes the prophetic is there but needs to be enlarged the apostolic is there but needs to be enlarged it's true that the healing ministry is there but it needs to be enlarged capacity please don't miss it this is not some activity of men no seven o'clock you are here no matter how long it takes to start just be here anywhere if you there is no space somewhere this is not a koinonia program this is a visitation that god is bringing to the land it will be a time of strange miracles few hours but the impact will linger upon your spirit make sure you fast please fast let the little children fast give them a little time they may not be able to fast six to six but except you are pregnant or under medical supervision then that that's all right but even at that doesn't mean you just eat anything anyhow are we together let your spirit be alive please off off useless movies films just suspend it for a while i beg you they don't have to be wrong all these social media distractions minimize it focus on god focus on god let what will play from your phone and your screens be worship give god one week and let him expand you you can't put new wine in an old wine skin so let god replace the wine skin so that it can take something heavier for the seasons that are coming hallelujah the protocol department will make arrangements we'll try to see how the buses will be available at least to bring in people and we'll try to finish on time but it's going to be seven days of fire in this place seven days of the strange move of the spirit epochal revelations of the truth of god's word that if and when you handle them will turn your life around hallelujah don't come alone invite someone years ago when i went for an Arbonke crusade there was no seat i stood there for six hours six solid hours because i was hungry when you are hungry you don't even see the color of the cloth of your neighbor your eyes are fixed he said if your eye be single your heart will be full of life don't just come to hear come to see you can argue with what you hear but you cannot argue with what you see i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower so that i will see what the lord will say the lord is saying but my eyes are seeing it is what you see that you get not just what you hear. the lord put a strong burden in my heart this night just a few minutes let's talk about it the spirit of wisdom your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise your spirit i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy i will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise james chapter one verse five Forever sing your praise. And I will forever sing your praise. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom. So the Bible tells us it is possible that a man can lack wisdom. 
it does not stop him from being a human being it is possible to live without the wisdom of god at work in you and he says if any of you lack wisdom the question here before we read on is how do you know you lack wisdom because you only ask when you don't have it but how do i know that i do not have wisdom because remember the bible says every man is right in his own eyes so based on what parameter what parameter do i use to arrive at the conclusion that i am bankrupt of wisdom there is nobody i know on earth with the exception of few people who will admit that they are not wise is that true you try telling somebody who considers himself a gentleman and say i don't think you are exactly wise and you think the person will laugh at you and say wow i'm just learning that no you're going to have a big problem the person is not wise me am i a madman do i look like one but the bible says if any of you realizes that he lacks wisdom so the first assignment is not to ask the first assignment is to find out how do you know that the wisdom of god that the spirit of wisdom is working in your life are we together now there must be a system in the kingdom that God has provided to help men understand. So I can come to the conclusion because you see, as human beings, it is very difficult for us to admit that certain things are not working in our lives. Especially for believers. We are people of faith. And sometimes we can exaggerate it and admitting the deficiency of certain qualities in our lives is not natural for men to admit. Are we together now? yes when you tell someone he can't cook say no 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 i can cook what are you? i mean this is it you are evidently seeing that this meal is not servable and the person is saying i can cook because in his eyes this is a wonderful meal are we together you are seeing a gentleman who is not looking smart and you're saying no 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 you are not dressing smart say, no 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 i mean as far as i'm concerned i'm very very okay so it is difficult i'm explaining to you this this if any man lack wisdom is a very deep process to arrive at a point let me tell you realizing whatever makes you come to a point where you know you do not have wisdom has to be the spirit of god the arrogance of men does not allow for that level of admission we can secretly desire to be wiser we can secretly admire individuals who the spirit of wisdom is evidently working in but to outspokenly admit no it's very uncomfortable are we together but the bible says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask who let him ask of god that give it unto how many men so the manifestation of the wisdom of god in the life of a believer is not privy to certain intelligent people it's not privy to apostles and prophets no the giving of this operation of the spirit is given to all men he says he does so liberally and then an upbraided not and it shall be given that means if I look at your life and I do not see wisdom, I am safe to conclude at certain things. Number one, that you have not received. And you receive not because you have not asked. And you ask not because you have not seen the deficiency in your life. Are you seeing that now? That means if you look at my life and your life, and I am bankrupt of the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of men that comes to naught, the wisdom of God if it is not in my life the Bible says if I ask it should be given so if it is not in my life and God is benevolent it means that I have not genuinely asked and I have not asked because I have not seen the need and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped that means something about my understanding i have indoctrinated myself into believing that i have sufficient wisdom 
Let me tell you the formula that the Bible designed for men to know whether there is wisdom in their lives or not. Wisdom is very vocal. The Bible says wisdom is justified by her children. Wisdom is justified by her children. There are fruits in your life and my life that validates the presence of wisdom. There has to be fruits in your life and my life. There are things I cannot as a human being be sure of whether you have them or not. I leave that to God. Wisdom is not part of those. Because if the wisdom of God is functioning in the life of an individual, it is justified by the results. Children there talks of the results. The proceedings that come from a life that is under the influence of wisdom. So how do you know tonight whether or not the wisdom of God and more so the spirit of wisdom is at work? Very simple. Look at your results. Look at your life. Unbiasedly. Look at your life unashamedly. And then you can come to the conclusion that mm -mm, the repetition of pain the repetition of failure listen carefully the repetition of struggle the repetition of hardship the repetition of the absence of the power the grace the favor of god in your life is a testament that the spirit of wisdom may not be at work in you the spirit of god is at work in you but that dimension of wisdom may not be at work in you. Are you blessed? Lack of the wisdom of God is what is responsible for the anxiety of men. You know what it means to be anxious? Worrisome. The fear that plagues people, you will always fear until you know what to do. And he himself knew what he ought to do. The Bible took out time to talk about anxiety. Philippians chapter 4. And when you read from verse 6 to 7. It says be anxious for nothing. Please give it to us. Let's, let's look at it before we, we talk some more about wisdom. It says be. The word careful there does not just mean be careless. It means be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer. We see prayer again. You leave that. We are going to touch that later. But it says be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. There is an information that can take away anxiety. Anxiety, let me tell you something. It's not proof that Satan is around you. It's proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life. It's an uncomfortable truth we must admit. Our world is full of people dying of anxiety. Where will this come from? Where will, I mean, what, no, no. The pain and fear. Jesus took half of a whole chapter to talk about worry. Spoke about the birds of the air that break a spiritual law that is responsible for abundance. He says, yet your father, yet not Solomon, arrayed in all of his splendor and apparel, is like one of these. Anxiety is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work. Anxiety stems from uncertainty. There is a level of uncertainty that is around our lives, financially speaking, spiritually speaking. So you are about to um, do certain things, embark on your life's journey, and then because of the gaps of uncertainty, you find out that there is worry and anxiety unbelief comes in fear comes in because of fear you become self-centered because you are aware that something about you will fail so you become possessive self-centered angry and all these other elements come in i found a very interesting scripture we're going to read it and then i'll define for you what wisdom is psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 are we there 
Read it, please. One to read. Ah, uh ah. -uh. One to read. Thou through their, thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever before me. Next verse. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. The last verse. I understand more than the ancient. Stop, stop, don't rush it. I understand more than my enemies. You made me wiser than my enemies. You made me wiser than my teachers. And you made me wiser than the ancient. And there is a key. We are coming there. Are we together? It says, Thou by thy commandments, by thy laws, ah, you have made me wiser wiser than my enemies so i can rise wiser than my teachers wiser than the ancients because i have kept your secret psalms 104 verse 24 psalm 104 verse 24 oh lord how manifold are thy works everybody say results i want you to read it just the first line but change works with results ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy results how did the results come about in wisdom thou hast made them all lord i look at your life and is full of mighty works results and the psalmist was careful to let us know that they did not just happen because you are God. It is by engaging wisdom, wisdom, that these possibilities have been made manifest. And the earth is full of your riches, which is one of the results that you have produced in wisdom. There is a relationship between results and wisdom. There is a relationship between riches and wisdom. How manifold. How multifaceted, how awe-inspiring are your works? What is wisdom? I put a definition here. Wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions. Scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately. Wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately. Possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately. What is wisdom? Knowing what to do and doing it wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it if there is no doing it is not wisdom wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it possessing the scriptural solution there are many solutions there are many ways that seem it right unto a man but the end thereof will justify what way he took. So scriptural solutions to life's challenges. And then having the possession of those solutions, you engage them appropriately. You are wise if you do that. Are we together? So you have wisdom to the degree to which we see you preferring scriptural solutions to the challenges that are around your life and others. And the results that they produce. Many people, listen to me, do not possess this quality. And there is an operation of the spirit that can make men to have this quality. Lavishly. That regardless of your age, listen carefully. 
regardless of your educational background regardless of what your level of orientation that you can be um you can have a an influence of this dimension of the holy spirit at work in your life and all of a sudden your life opens up wonder after wonder a comprehension of the scriptural solutions listen to me if i ask everyone now write your prayer request and bring it here right now there are people who are going to ask for pages not pieces of papers every one thing that you are writing is in need of an answer is that true the bible says the spirit of wisdom is able to route you in a way and manner that you possess the keys that it takes to turn that request into your testimony and then the fortitude to engage the laws you now know until the results become evident in your life is called wisdom proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 to 9 proverbs chapter 4 please don't trivialize what i'm teaching you tonight wisdom is the principal thing it's using a business terminology now wisdom is the principal thing it says therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding verse 8 exalt her personifies wisdom now exalt her like you would do a lady you love exalt her is that true like you see a man treat his wife that he so loves he says exalt her and there is a reward for exalting her prize her above all else and she shall do what what is responsible for promotion it is true that god is the lifter of men but the dimension of him that lifts men is his wisdom meaning if you are in a position for a long time it's not just an attack from hell but it's a sign that the spirit of wisdom is not at work the spirit of wisdom creates motion in your life it not only creates motion it creates an upgrade to your life it is because of the presence of this possibility that the bible says the path of the just is like the shining light that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day exalt her and she shall promote thee now listen ah, it says she shall bring thee to honor it did say she shall bring thee honor honor is here it's not just a it's not just an attribute it's a realm of existence that wisdom can like an usher say follow me i will lead you somewhere regardless of your background as a preacher as a businessman as a mother a father wisdom can usher you and whilst you follow her foolishly you will get into a realm the name of that realm is honor not an event it is how you live honor that wisdom can bring a man to honor when thou dost embrace her are we together like Ruth held on to Naomi, I'm not leaving you. I have seen the value of your presence in my life. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. This is what people are looking for. They are looking for promotion in the spirit. They are looking for promotion in finances promotion in influence men of god are struggling trusting god increase in membership increase in whatever this is the formula god gives us and we ignore him and then we keep searching around verse 9 this is what the bible says she shall give to thy head hallelujah an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver who is the she here wisdom wisdom that for embracing wisdom it can veto your background it can veto any other thing in your life brothers and sisters and bring you to this possibility this is the realm that we all desire to get there and the bible tells you that the way to get there 
is wisdom. Are we together? Yes. The Bible says through wisdom a house is built. A house is built not through desire. Through desire, the intention to build is there. But the actual building is true wisdom. This ministry, brothers and sisters, you see, was built and is being maintained by wisdom. Every great man and woman you acknowledge around the world, every great enterprise that you see and admire, everyone who has come to a position of influence in the kingdom has done so by the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. Years ago, I was listening to Pat Robertson, the founder of CBN, 700 Club. And he said as a young man, when he was about to start ministry, he said he went to the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm a young man about to start. Give me three things. Number one, he said, give me wisdom. Number two, he said, give me favor. Number three, he said, give me the anointing of the spirit. I went back to God too. And I said, Lord, thank God I'm still young. Number one, give me wisdom. Boy, I stayed there before moving to favor. Because I knew that that wisdom, it, I, my life was so bankrupt of it. How else would I have gotten it? Our society is full of unwise people. It's not an insult, it's a description. They are sincere people. But their decisions and their results are very clear. That the wisdom of God, of God, not Sophia, not human wisdom. We are talking of a dimension of wisdom here that has nothing to do with age and not necessarily education and all of that. The wisdom of God. The faculty to produce result as God, at God's level. The spirit of wisdom. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. The reason why Joshua excelled was not just that he was anointed. Joshua always had the anointing. The anointing was there. But the Bible says, And Joshua the son of Nun was full of what? The spirit of wisdom. He was already full of the spirit. And yet Moses was told to lay hands on him. How do you lay hands on someone who is already filled with the spirit? And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. Not full of wisdom, full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Joshua, full of the spirit of wisdom. Joshua, full of the spirit of wisdom. No wonder when Moses died, there was nothing much for God to tell him again. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Joshua, my only encouragement is for you to be strong. You already have the spirit of wisdom. Mm. You have it. Just be strong. You are a young man. And I know that leading these people is difficult, but there is a spirit in you. You will lead them in a way that will make you a wonder. Leadership is by the spirit of wisdom. Mm. Let me tell you this. Listen. Any man on earth, listen to me carefully any man on earth and in the kingdom that multitudes are listening to him respect him human beings are not stupid are you hearing what i'm saying you can have a crowd of foolish people but there is a level to which there is there is a level to which human beings will not be more foolish than that jesus went up the mountain and a crowd followed him there was something he was telling them there was something contained in his teachings i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise not knowledgeable hidden is a principle that can bring solutions to your pain ah. there are families that if they knew this weeping will stop it's true there are individuals that if they know this weeping will stop he said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll 
and the elder tapped me and said weep not the book can be opened when the book is open then tears I look at times in my life when I was so bankrupt of certain dimensions of wisdom and I looked at the tears that came from my eyes but no more his wisdom has come hmm. I will sing of the wonders of your word I will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise and for preachers we need this so much you know most times we don't start ministry with wisdom we start ministry with passion passion and then your passion leads you to spiritual activities that bring certain dimensions of the anointing and then while the ministry starts going at a point you hook in one place still anointed but wisdom you can't move further because the promoter is wisdom the exalter is wisdom the one who brings you to the realm of honor is wisdom herein lies the answer to the dilemma we see that gifted people still don't rise because to be gifted and to be wise are two different things you can be full of so much anointing and yet live an unrewarded life and yet not be able to rise in the spirit but god is changing someone's story in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i have watched people do you know um sometimes i sit down and i look at people truly speaking when i look at people i fight tears because i know what they are doing wrong i don't fight tears because of their situation i know i fight tears because i can explain why their lives are that way i have seen well-meaning lovely men and women of god that i love and honor with all my heart but I look at their lives the same way my life was and I know where they are missing it. Please, no result is a mistake. Please learn this. You may not understand what is being engaged, but there is something being engaged to produce that outcome. You may not understand what is being engaged, but there is something being engaged. A man does not just become powerful. No, no. A man does not just last in ministry. A man does not just become anointed. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. The fact that you don't know what is being done does not mean something is not being done. Your miracle is when the solution comes and when the grace to apply it is released. Then you know that challenge has come to an end. Isaiah 11 tells us there is a real spirit of wisdom, verse 2. That the Holy Spirit can manifest in a man as wisdom. Notice that even for the building of the tabernacle and in the Lord's house, God did not allow people to be involved carelessly. The spirit of wisdom had to come upon them to produce God's desired results. If the spirit of wisdom comes upon your ministry, your ministry will change in a way not just from human terms you will find out that the possibilities that only God can produce is what happens in your life years ago I'm not a social media person but the Lord spoke to me revealing the strategy for the next level of ministry and this is what the Lord told me I said Lord how will your word get to people and all of that yes we're going to have a tv ministry but that's for another time but how is it going to happen and this is what the lord told me at that time they sell messages you don't upload messages online and the lord said this is the strategy don't sell any message let the messages be packaged and put it online i will give it wings to the ends of the earth the wisdom of god it never made sense then what is this who has the time to download heavy mbs 
of an audio not video people are not i mean when somebody can buy a cd and slot it who do you think you are but when his wisdom comes in something that looks so foolish go around jericho seven times just go around it has never been done oh god just go around and at the seventh time that act of wisdom crashes down jericho brothers and sisters that one act till today this ministry will never recover from it that one act in obedience to the spirit of wisdom that's it hmm. i live to praise your name i have no fear of what tomorrow brings the spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for being able to afford the bills of ministry please hear me there is no ministry except you want to manipulate people don't be angry at men of god that you see manipulating people for let me tell you you are doing ministry and you want to work in financial integrity and still work in financial abundance you've got to receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom otherwise it will wear your grace out you will cry one day to death You need it in your life there are many christian homes that is very clear the spirit of wisdom is not there the decisions are always leading to pain the decisions are always leading to retrogression remember i told you that wisdom is justified by her children so if i claim the spirit of wisdom is in my life and everything i do is moving me back i should check something is wrong something is wrong there are men of God who are going back and back and back. There are individuals going back. They are better yesterday than they are today. No matter what kind of prayer you pray for them. I've seen individuals that I didn't see for a long time. And you look at them and their lives are a tragedy. They are still serving the Lord. That's the painful part. They never, they, they didn't backslide. Still passionate. And you say, why is your life like this? Are these your children? Yes, sir. Why are they like this? of god god is faithful no sir don't 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 that does not look like faithfulness is god challenging us some of our parents are pastors they've been pastors for many years i'm not talking about finances no growth there is no day that the ministry breaks through that you can say sinners have been saved lives have been transformed pain after pain let me tell you repetition of pain is a sign that you need the spirit of wisdom it is the principal thing the bible says it is the principal thing there are ministries that rise and fall they rise to a level they are doing so well and then at a point you find out that things start to nose dive no scandal no nothing just they have exhausted the level of wisdom that can take them beyond that level and they come down the scriptural solution to life's problem and the fortitude to engage it appropriately is called wisdom standing let me use someone come come show me. standing between this gentleman and his destiny whether it is spiritually speaking whether it is financially speaking the obstacle other forces are there like favor and the rest but it is wisdom that tells you what to do for other forces you know why the bible says it is the principal thing because all other forces depend on it it is when you engage the truths that are received from heaven that other forces now start coming into play the anointing this and that it is wisdom that shows you what to do for the anointing to be multiplied in your life it is wisdom that tells you what to do for favor to be activated it is wisdom that tells you what to do for restoration to come all other manifestations are dependent on wisdom so in the interim there are many other forces but the principal force wisdom are we together 
So I do not, I know that I should get there. I know that if favor comes, I will arrive there. I know that there is a way I can be healed. I know that there is a way the prophetic gift can be multiplied. But what is that way? What is that way? And how do I engage it? It is the spirit of wisdom that has brought forth these seven days of divine visitation. Because there is something that you can engage that will bring other things and then the spirit of wisdom comes i can show you a man that is carrying the spirit of wisdom his results her results it is true wisdom is justified by her children if you accept this thing tonight then we can finish up that verse if any of you lack results if any of you lack results if you lack results you lack wisdom if any of you lack results if your spiritual life lacks potency if your finances lack potency if your influence and your leadership and whatever it is that you're involved in lacks potency no promotion no growth nobody desires your grace you are living an unrewarded life spiritually and otherwise it says that if you lack this it's a sign that the wisdom of god is not at work in you hallelujah let me share with you very briefly how the spirit of wisdom works this is the core of what i'm teaching tonight most people are aware we've taught several teachings on the holy spirit and we've taught on wisdom you can make reference to my teaching what wisdom is this but the operation how it works is where i think that most people have not been able to access it mm. how is the spirit of wisdom how does it operate how do i activate the spirit of wisdom so that it produces for me ready let's finish up the scripture james chapter 1 and verse 5 James chapter 1 verse 5 There is wisdom in the name of Jesus There is wisdom in the name of Jesus If, if any one of you lack results which is a product of lack of wisdom what's the first thing? Let him ask you have not because you ask not not because god is unable to give it let him ask let him ask let him pray let him raise up a petition from a desperate heart that when i begin to pray my prayer not only brings the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom but also activates its operation if prayer can bring wisdom then prayer can make it work too are we together now yes let him pray i can know a man functioning under the influence of the spirit of god by the results that come from his prayer not just his prayer I need to see the results that come from your prayer the reason why many ministries have poor prayer meetings is because over time people have concluded that prayer does not work they cannot see the results from it do you know that praying in the spirit captures something the Bible calls the hidden wisdom of God that the princes of this world did not know it says for if they had known this they would not crucify the Lord of glory there was something Paul was doing while he was praying and praying in the spirit that began to grant him access prayer activates the operation of the spirit of wisdom not just bringing the anointing in your life the functionality the operation of the spirit of wisdom is released as you pray while they prayed 
They didn't know what to do. How do we advance the gospel across this territory? They prayed and they fasted and the spirit of wisdom came. Separate me Paul and Barnabas. This is a strategy. They stood before Jericho. Listen, when you know that the spirit of wisdom is with you, you will never fear. When you see challenges, all you need to know is to wait till the answer comes. Many of us never wait. We go ahead and say, let the answer follow me. And we call it faith and it damages us into pieces. May never live to have a second chance. When Joshua got before Jericho, the Bible says the fence of Jericho could host five chariots, fortified tooth and nail. To a point that a prostitute could comfortably live in the fence. The fence of Jericho was like CGC. How do you penetrate the place? Do you shoot? Is it an arrow? Is it a gun? Do you jump? The spirit of wisdom. He said, don't worry. They circumcised themselves and set their heart apart. And an angel just came and revealed a strategy. Do this, do that. And the Lord spoke. The spirit of wisdom. Go around the city seven times. And on the seventh day, go around seven times. The spirit of wisdom. Many of the things that we call prophecy is prophecy, yes, but what was uttered is the wisdom of God. Go and bath seven times. Go and bath seven times. It is the solution not to all problems, to your problem. Meaning someone else will do it. Not directed by God and not get any solution. You see that? The spirit of wisdom is God's customized solution for your challenges. It's not generic. It's personal. That's why I said it is not, it is not the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world is, is universal in application. Like you say, if someone is hungry, eat. God can tell you if you are hungry, dance. Now, that does not make sense, but that is his solution for you. Go and bath seven times. And the guy felt insulted. Habba, I'm a captain of the Syrian army. And he went to bath the seventh time. The Bible says his skin became fresh. You see, let me tell you, this is the mystery behind people doing what does not make sense and still getting results they are not making sense is that they are doing it as directed the spirit of wisdom came whatever he tells you to do do it this is the fountain of wisdom mary knew she did they would have said ah jesus look 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 the the person who sells this wine is here he can tell you jews were not foolish people they knew how to crush wine for kings whatever he tells you do notice that no single miracle of Jesus was repeated twice the results were repeated many times but the manifestation of wisdom brought a unique solution for every issue at a certain time he spat on the ground and put in someone's eyes at a certain time he did something else look at him but we keep repeating the same thing and we just faith comes by hearing hearing what the wisdom of God when his wisdom comes to you then you get up and do what he told you to do then your life becomes a wonder Lord where are we going to get the venue for this meeting I saw in my visions overflow Lord I can active your venue I can use my brain to look at several venues which venue in Zaria will contain the crowds you are showing me just keep praying Shagabakatakatabata CGC the spirit of wisdom see that as at the time the lord spoke the building had not even been expanded this when the spirit of wisdom speaks don't doubt you can walk on water and every other person who is walking sings except you because the spirit of wisdom is the dimension of the holy spirit that will ensure that what you see this is what makes the life of certain people look miraculous you are doing the same thing but they come and do it and get strange results because they don't do it as desired they wait faith waits until wisdom speaks you don't just act carelessly just because you know no. wisdom is manifested in prayer when we pray 
the spirit of wisdom begins to speak learn this most of us we are so distracted in our prayer that we do not hear the communications of the spirit of wisdom lord what is the way out to this predicament and challenge in my life and the lord says pray and we pray after five minutes say, god you are not speaking please good night and we just we cheat ourselves there you don't pray as long as you want you pray till the answer comes it's not the issue of 10 minutes or one hour it is when it comes there is an object to your prayer and you begin to pray when 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 cgc became full and the overflows became full it was obvious that when there was a program here there was no other venue that could take us lord what is going to be the way out of this when you know this you know that there's nothing called impossible impossible is the name given to the state before the arrival of the wisdom of god when the wisdom of god comes it will turn a mountain i tell you into a level playing ground is god speaking to you hmm. And all of a sudden, I was praying one time. And the Lord said, because of this, every time Friday night is not available, Sunday night will be available. As simple as it is, that ended the issue of trying to look for all of these things. Lord, the overflows are full now to the roadside. What do we do next? By his wisdom, God was able to profess solution. And we're able to host people. Overflow 3 is bigger than overflow 1, 2, and three and i mean overflow one and two together the wisdom of god you see you never see how it would have happened until wisdom creates the way then you look and say ah, why didn't i think about it because your small brain cannot think about it my brother you need the wisdom of god joseph after he finished interpreting the dream then the spirit of wisdom came hear the spirit of wisdom speaking let pharaoh find a man who is discreet and wise and appoint him over this and that when there was problem and the people were arguing and it was almost killing moses moses could not do his work because there were so many people and god told him mr man you are going to kill yourself let the spirit of wisdom guide you set men thousands and hundreds and fifties and then appoint elders to take care of them then you just play supervisory roles ah, and moses found rest he would have died and said it's the will of god how many pastors die because they love god but there is no manifestation of the spirit of wisdom to guide the affairs by the grace of god one of the principles that help in my being efficient in ministry is the fact that by his wisdom we have created a robust leadership structure that allows me to focus on the ministry of word and prayer i don't have to come here in the afternoon to check to say ah i hope these people did their duty through wisdom a house is built is god speaking to us everybody say prayer, prayer. shout it prayer that means if the devil attacks your prayer life what is he attacking he's attacking the arrival of a scriptural solution that brings testimonies for you when you set yourself apart to pray and the devil said it does not matter among other things he's robbing you of access to the wisdom of god say i will pray shout it say i will pray, pray. men who pray access the wisdom of god they come up from their prayer life with very strange solutions very very strange solutions sometimes solutions that don't make sense do not do not downplay on a leader that knows how to get wisdom through prayer when you say we have come to our wit's end then you see another dimension of grace and wisdom number two how is wisdom activated wisdom is activated through meditation meditation noisy people sorry for you this is where the devil cheats us we live in a noisy society if you are not making noise your phone is making noise if your phone is not making noise the television is making noise if the television is not making noise the well-wishers around your house are making noise our lives are full of noise that cheats us there is a dimension of wisdom that only silence can bring meditation great leaders meditate 
you sit down. Thank you. There's got to be a way out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you sit quietly. Do you know sometimes I do this from morning till night, meditating like a fool. Sometimes I just kneel down in front of my chair and put my head down. I'm waiting. Waiting. And the answer will never come till sometimes late in the night. The spirit of wisdom comes majestically. Doesn't come in a rush and foolishly and carelessly. If you don't have patience, forget about it. Because it will not come. Sometimes you finish all of those things you have prayed in the night. You just wake up to stretch a little and fire falls from heaven. And you sit down. This is it. This is it. <laughs> it will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. It will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Is the wisdom of God working in your life? Oh, I fell down the other day when you said receive wisdom. Do you meditate? No, sir. Then the spirit of wisdom may be there, but you're not aligning sufficiently. That's why many men of God don't have messages to preach because they write a list of messages and preach one by one and they finish the 35th one and the year is not even up to half. The year is not halfway gone. And you wonder, what do I do? Inspiration comes in the place of meditation. Never forget. What does it mean to meditate? To ponder. Ponder. Not just on anything. To ponder on truth. Ponder on the word of God. Not just to mutter, but to ponder, to think. It's called imagination. It's not like imagination. It is called imagination. The creation of images by the spirit. Ah. Genesis 11. Before Nimrod began to build, he called the people and they began to meditate. Meditation is not just sitting down under a tree. That's a wonderful, um, um, what they call it, a wonderful way of stimulating meditation. But meditation is where your mind is called to a point where it is stimulated to begin to create. Creativity is a product of meditation. Let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom works. The spirit of wisdom is a creative spirit. It's the first dimension of the Holy Spirit we see in Genesis chapter 1 creation the spirit of wisdom creates it creates solutions see what i'm teaching you is 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 a jackpot to your success in life if you understand it creation the solution to every problem you seek already exists in christ but there is a system of transporting it from the realm of the spirit it is called creation it is called the power of imagination where you give the Holy Spirit your mind like a woman's womb and you allow him to brood upon it. That's what happens in meditation. You offer like a wife gives her womb over to her husband to be implanted with a seed. That's what happens. Many of us are not creators. Creation is not just by speaking. It is out of the abundance of the heart. When that incubation has happened, then your speaking is among the process that makes it manifest. Not many people will teach you this thing I'm teaching you. The spirit of wisdom will make your life a wonder if you know how it works. Watch Jesus. This woman was caught in adultery. The very act of it this is a kind of question where both yes and no would chain you and jesus kept quiet and was writing the spirit of wisdom immediately the spirit of wisdom landed then he spoke he who does not have sin should cast the first stone and then the bible says his speech affected the oldest first you see you see how powerful wisdom is because the youngest can drop it and the oldest will say, are you, are you stupid? Pick that stone. Then he started with the oldest. If the oldest has dropped the stone, what do you do as the youngest? The miracle is not in dropping the stone. It's who dropped it first. The oldest dropped it. Down to the last person. Woman, where are your accusers? Go. Neither do I condemn you. 
is the spirit of wisdom it is the spirit of wisdom that suggested the strategy for the salvation of men mm. that instead of everybody dying let's make a caricature out of satan it's called the hidden wisdom let one man come and let the whole world enter in him then let him die so that one man came and satan kept looking for him at a point the holy ghost restrained his hand and satan began to prevail and satan manipulated men to kill jesus and he ran to hell he said demons did you watch what happened i can't believe it i killed jesus and to his shock he saw jesus in hell and he said no this is a joke you can't be in hell say yes i'm here because when you kill sinners they go to hell and so i died sin and here i am in hell give me the keys <sighs> give me the keys give me the keys give me the keys and when the keys were given to him he dislodged principalities and powers made a public show of them and then he not only resurrected he resurrected with many who had died they were in the streets of jerusalem everybody saw him and he said guys this is it you will um you will go to heaven but i have to be the firstborn among the resurrected so let me go to heaven quickly i'll come back and then you guys will go and he went to heaven poured his blood according to hebrews in the tabernacle became the high priest and then he returned the guys went and he went to the disciples all hail and back all power in heaven he disarmed satan not through power through wisdom are we together listen let me teach you something i walk in the anointing many results are not dependent on power force wisdom is really what brings dominion because the realm of the spirit is a legal realm you engage through knowledge not just by trying to force things it's the ministry of the angels to do that they are the enforcers of the word of god they confirm the word of the servant but wisdom is solution that's why sometimes you see me ministering to people and you see me doing stupid things i can hold somebody's hand and the holy spirit can say let that person shout jesus and the person just shout Jesus, and then the person is falling and you are watching me too i'm watching i'm as shocked as you we are all watching the wisdom of the spirit you will now get the formula and run to one small meeting and hold somebody's hand and tell the person to shout jesus and person shouts and looks at you say i've done it say do it again because it was just copying this is one of the big mistake of we young ministers we copy acts without the spirit that brought them are we together yes meditation this is where many of us have missed it that you sit before the lord what's that song brooding over every darkness you are called listen light to shine from dark how can light come out of darkness that's what the bible said he said god who has commanded light to come out of darkness that means the answer is right there with you in your chaos the light the raw material sit down in that situation and meditate and let creation begin to happen when you plant corn the ugliness of the soil and it is still where the new shoot comes out of it's a principle he's brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine in darkness you are brooding over all my darkness you are causing light to shine from dark so in the midst of that financial hardship sit down there that's when creation happens you're not going to run away from the challenge and get a solution somewhere sit in it by the rivers of babylon in the midst of the captivity i sat down there and a vision was open to me we run away from challenges the miracle is right there sit down 
there's got to be a way lord my wife no i prayed on there's got to be a way and all of a sudden you allow him to impregnate your mind ha. brothers and sisters i can tell you this your life will be a wonder first to you if you practice this it will be as if you are holding a charm or a genie somewhere that you are winding many of us don't sit down jobless people don't sit down to allow creation happen they just loiter around sir can you give me a job and god is saying i want to speak to you no oh god I'm, I'm, i mean I'm, I'm i want to marry they said I, I can't marry because i don't have a job me i want to and god said sit down now if we can take half the time we spend loitering around to sit down not worrying just find the back of one tree in the night and sit down when other people are snoring their destinies you sit quietly there's got to be a way to my life lord everything is not working nine prayer requests since last year nine of them not answered you are not a liar jesus speak to me and you are just playing you know i told i get who did i give an assignment was it us or school of ministry students you know sometimes i don't know the difference but do it still do it go and play worship you don't just sit down and beds are just making noise worship doesn't distract you it steals your spirit and then you sit down sometimes for hours the flesh will never allow you sit down this flesh you see once you sit down you just start thinking ah but that lady is really beautiful you see don't stop still sit down there God, but my father do you know to be honest do you know that i didn't have a good upbringing don't worry this is the flesh trying to distract something a time will come your flesh will be frustrated it will give up it's one of the benefits of fasting the flesh is empowered by the health of your body it takes advantage of food so when when food is minimal it it alters the interruption of the flesh yes sir it does ultimately leading to boosting your faith but that's how it works and you sit down lord there has to be a way and the lord sits down and says but you know you have hundred thousand and then in scripture just opens up and now this is god the spirit of wisdom coming to you now and looks at it and says except a corn falls in the ground and the lord can speak to you and say that hundred thousand that is your last money i'm not saying do it go and sow it you are not doing donation just thinking about it and you carry yourself as if you are going to go and die and sow it somewhere the moment you do that the same spirit that spoke to you now goes to your uncle who doesn't like you and say remember i've been telling you you will bless somebody it's time now it's janet it's this person and then your uncle calls you wisdom justified by her children and you are surprised and god says keep trusting me like this for your life and then you sit down and you find out let me tell you how god forces the spirit of wisdom to walk in you sometimes he will close the door of any physical help in your life pain is a very good way of activating wisdom some of us until you go through certain levels of pain wisdom will never work in your life it's not all pain that is demonic hear what i'm telling you You always receive hundred, hundred thousand from your father. So every time you are saying the wisdom of God, you say yes. But what you are mean is the money is coming. And then your father says, well, um, I had a dream and I didn't see myself giving you money for five months. Say, so what are you saying? Say, exactly that. Um, a voice spoke to me and that's the voice that has been speaking to me that I got rich that you are benefiting from. The same voice said I should leave you alone. You may insult and get angry, but after two weeks, you sit down and in your anger you frown you frown you frown and then you just open a scripture anyhow lord help me and then you just see takes you to the story of the widow in zarafat what did she do you have been reading it because your stomach is full now you read it with your stomach empty then child thy light break forth and you see something you never saw God commanded a woman, but she was not aware she was commanded. But the Bible says God already commanded her. 
could it could it be that there was something she was not receiving because god told elijah i've commanded her whether she, the the message arrived to her or not is another thing but me i've commanded her but when elijah arrived it didn't look like she was aware i expect her to say oh you are the one you're welcome come in i mean the loaf is there the man said i'm about to die she would have died not hearing the command or seeing the prophet the same way god will say i've answered this person and you look at the person's life and the answer is not yet there i meditate a lot creation happens in my life through meditation i have explored the power of imagination this is not some zodiac scientology metaphysical thing this is a principle listen to the advice that god gave joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 let's attempt to round up he said this book of the law please give it to us shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shall meditate i thought i was do you know i literally was seeing it <laughs> truly speaking <laughs> you guys are delaying okay this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth listen but thou shall meditate therein meditate therein not meditate any other place you don't meditate on what you want you meditate on the word of god not just look at a newspaper and say hi again Boko Haram. and you are looking and you are thinking about a solution for your church it won't come that way are we together thou shall meditate there in day and night when you meditate and information will come from it then you observe to do and then your way becomes prosperous you don't act first you sit down and allow the creative force of god's wisdom come to your life lord my wedding is five months all we have is hundred thousand the budget is 2.5 there's got to be a way out not hi god you sent me mm, jesus talk to me my spirit is open i silence every voice of fear silence them first i silence every wicked voice that wants to make god look unfaithful in my life lord you are faithful and you are sitting down and the spirit of wisdom begins to move the spirit of wisdom can tell you to do anything he can just say call one person and you call the person and he says i'm going to do a transfer you would think it's hundred thousand you will see three million and god says now it has come go and marry your wife and other people will see you and say you that i know Abba, my brother and you you will quietly go back and give god glories ah god wisdom has covered for me that's why you see some people whose testimony should be like your own based on the physical parameters you see but their testimonies are a thousand times greater than yours wisdom bail them out someone needs to receive this wisdom tonight because the depending on men forever let god send them remember i told you all blessings come from god through men to you but when you begin to depend on men depending on men is addictive it's addictive those men can even be your father and your mother many of us who have all this right conscious mentality my father you are the one that gave birth to me you are 40 years you are still saying it and god may not cause what is happening in your family but you will see it as a ready tool and push you out and then you sit down and then you worry and call it meditation and god says no worrying i've stopped you from doing that but you sit down and you meditate let me admit to you that you will not meditate one night and get the solution no i wish it were so sometimes it can happen but that's just god's mercy helping you to encourage you so that the day that it doesn't come with the speed you want you will know god has been faithful and you will stay there are people who stay for weeks weeks turn to months every multi-millionaire knows this thing i'm telling you that their results is not just based on what they do but based on the reality that has been altered in their minds and their perceptions it is true way before god blessed this ministry with these crowds i had captured it it's there 
Do you believe what I've taught you tonight? My, my prayer for you is not just that you finish a service today and say, wow, nice. <clears throat> but that you go and sit down and say, Lord, I know I'm a prayer warrior, but there is no time in silence to sit quietly. Wake up in the night and think, Lord, what is the next key? What is the next step? There are bills before me. What is the next step? This is the dimension we must step into as a ministry. There has to be a way out. Don't say there is no way. Don't join Satan. Saying there is no way is calling God a liar. You open scripture. No. There is a way. Ah, light me Lord. Light me Lord. Light me Lord. Like a candle. Light me Lord. Light me Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my light. have taught you is the secret for the hand of God upon your life financially you will sit down and do business after business and business after business and be shocked that the result will be the same because out of the abundance of the heart what have you incubated in your spirit and your mind it's not about doing things you tell people these things they never listen because most people think men of God know nothing about finances and people run around looking for all kinds of give me money let me do this and God says one thing is needful settle down first apostle what do you think I can do to prosper sit down no I, my, blood, my blood is hot calm down and one the breath of the spirit will just light that bulb and you stand up circumspectly and with little effort the Lord will create a wonder out of your life hear what I'm saying write the challenges let me give you an assignment go and write out all the challenges that you are trusting God for and sit with a clean sheet of paper and your Bible and worship and just keep looking at them let me teach you this in conclusion can I can I am I free to teach you Look at me. <laughs> Pray in tongues for one minute. Pray in tongues for one minute. Labaka sude bilahasi yana kataboshi. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something. Jesus was teaching and he said, The eye is the light of the body. Listen carefully. Please, please listen. The eye is the light of the body. Do you know what Jesus was saying? I hope you know Jesus was not teaching a parable. Go and Google the parables of Jesus. You don't see that story as a parable. He was giving something, he was teaching a powerful principle that the eye, these two objects you see in front of your face, that there is a mystery. Seeing is only one of the functions and it's simply because that's all science told you. There is a system of transporting realities to and from the realm of the spirit that only your eyes. That's why God healed every blind person he saw. There was no blind person that passed Jesus that was not healed. There were other cripples that he left them, but he was violent on blindness. There is a relationship between your eyes and your destiny. Listen, Paul became blinded by the glory of God, but God had to open his spiritual eyes to be seen first before the physical one opened. Do you know why your eye closes in the night when you sleep? Light me, Lord, light my life, 
light my destiny. Brothers and sisters, there are secrets in this book. When you find it, your results are not just an issue of wish. These eyes you see, let me tell you what happens. Anything the eye makes contact with consistently, the mind, the mind, listen to me carefully, what your eyes makes contact with, it forces your mind to begin to think on that reality. Now watch this. It is not the thinking about it. It is an incubation that starts happening in the realm of the spirit. Now the Holy Ghost knows the solution. Are we together now? You meditate. Not just by closing your eyes alone. Because sometimes you close the physical eyes. But you are still seeing. Are we together now? And so that's the reason why you pray well in the night because there are few distractions your eye is seeing but you just see black and white this color sometimes can create noise it is an enemy to meditation are we together go and close a room and sit quietly and play worship and see what happens to you where you are not seeing the speaker Nepa took light and you are using your phone to worship and you pray they don't bring light because it's doing something to you. This eye is a transmitter. The same way you have a radio wave. Watch this. Not just your ears. This eye, the creation of a radio wave is in the similitude of the way God designed men to walk. That you lift an antenna and it starts receiving the, before you, the goal is to get that sound to your radio. Is that true? But you lift up something. That something is your eyes. That when you begin to make contact with the word of God. I don't mean reading it. Just looking. Open thou my eyes. That I may behold wondrous things. What did David know? So, you are making contact and all of a sudden, let me tell you what will happen. Very soon, your eyes will stop seeing. You are looking, but you are no longer seeing. Your mind is what takes over. Have you seen that happen? That you are reading something and for hours you keep reading the same line. You can't move forward. That's because something more superior than your reading is distracting you. In that case, worrying. The eyes then your ears these things are great I'm showing you notice that you have a selection of songs in your phone or whatever you never sit down particularly to hear them but after hearing them five or six times you know the next song and you can sing along if they ask you to sing it on your own now you can't sing but once they play it you can follow it and sing these are systems the eyes is a very deep and dangerous mystery yes he told the man at get beautiful look at us use your eyes i'm about to talk to you i thought you said give me your ears he said look at us steadfastly and he looked at them and he said now you are seeing what was the requirement of elijah receiving from elijah not if you can hear me if you can was he not looking at him? This is your Bible. I'm not reading an occult book. This is your Bible. When Jesus was, le was levitating to heaven, the Bible says they kept looking at him. Their eyes stayed on him until the clouds received him. And something happened to them. Could it be that the only thing you have been doing with your eyes is to just look around? No. That's why you don't remember the faces of blind people. Because you cannot see their eyes. The, the, the part that makes your face recognizable is your eyes. Mm. 
Let's pray. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my life. Is the principal thing it says therefore get wisdom the bible says does not wisdom cry it personifies wisdom that wisdom is calling on people and say please don't attempt to live without me when the lord was creating the heavens and the earth the spirit of wisdom was there your life cannot be created without it the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for delivering the secrets of the kingdom without wisdom revelation is not even possible the spirit of wisdom will grant you access to scriptural solutions brothers and sisters you will watch mountains before you crash and people look at you and say what wisdom is this there is a relationship between mighty works and wisdom. Every time you see mighty works, strange results at the back of it is a scriptural solution. It's a mystery that was unveiled. When the spirit of wisdom comes upon you, then all other manifestations of the spirit can be made possible. Without it, you are just joking around. I saw this in my life. I craved for the spirit of wisdom. I pursued it with my life and my all. The day the spirit of wisdom came upon me, I knew. I have been studying the Bible. But brothers and sisters, when the spirit of wisdom comes, your results change immediately in a strange way. The speakings of the spirit. We need this for our families. Could this be why your ministry has been grounded? Could this be why our families never rise to certain extent? We think the thing is just about more money or more this or more that. No, please help them. We are going to spend two or three minutes crying out in the spirit and say, Lord, a baptism. I'm tired of no results in my life. I'm tired of foolish decisions in my life. Pray. Pray and let the spirit of wisdom come upon you. Never stranded of solutions. Never stranded of solution. There is always something to do. There is some, always a way of moving forward. Pray. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Everything that has breath, everything that has breath, everything that has breath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I receive a baptism of the spirit of wisdom. I receive the grace to manifest supernatural solutions over every challenge of my life. Lift your voice and pray. There is an answer. There has to be an answer. There is an answer. There is an answer. I can't be stranded forever. There is an answer. Hidden in the spirit of wisdom. 
is an answer a strange answer pray Lord there is an answer to my financial predicament there is an answer to the challenge in my life that you have not seen it and you have not received it does not mean it is not there there has to be an answer to the challenges in my family hallelujah say in the name of Jesus I receive a strategy say it in the name of Jesus I receive the strategy out of confusion out of pain out of tragedy lift your voice and begin to pray there has to be a strategy he made his ways known to Moses by the spirit of wisdom there has to be a way I cannot beg forever there is a way to the anointing there is a way to my ministry rising there is a way there is a way there has to be a way I receive I receive divine strategies illumination you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and i'm standing here only because you move mountains you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your Listen, let me give us one more prayer. By the grace of God, we are a people of prayer. Most of the churches and the body of believers within this region are a people who have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. But we lack the grace for creativity. We lack the grace for imagination. The breath of the spirit upon your mind I like you to pray and say, Lord, grant me the grace to meditate. The grace to bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. The grace to use my mind to allow the Holy Ghost breathe upon my mind. Are you praying? God gave you a mind to bring victory to your life. He gave you a mind not just to watch things happen. Believe me, the solution is locked up within you. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin his work of creation. The answer will come. Pray. Baptize my mind. Baptize my mind. There is an answer locked up by the Holy Ghost. My mind can produce supernatural solutions. Hallelujah. Listen. The worst, the worst condition of a man is madness. In my opinion, the worst condition of a man is madness. Where the devil has hijacked your capacity to create. This is how companies come into being. This is how churches increase and expand. 
This is how business corporations rise. This is how individuals rise. They can stay with the Holy Ghost and say there's got to be a way. And they stay there and stay there until something comes from heaven. And they run with it and the vision speaks in the end. And their lives look miraculous. There is no mystery behind it. It's the sacrifice of meditation. Every religion, every sect agrees on this one thing that meditation brings creation. Hallelujah. Lord, may my mind be a channel for strategies to come from heaven. Lift your voice and pray. May my mind be a channel. You didn't give me a mind just to gossip and loiter around. Stop all this moving up and down and sit down. Sit down with the Holy Ghost. Sit down. Let him breathe upon your eyes. Let him breathe upon your ears. Let him breathe upon your mind. And my brother, my sister, your life will change in a way that will surprise you. It's a guarantee that I give you. The hidden wisdom that the princes did not know. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So God used that strategy and slew the lamb from the foundations of the earth. So there was no problem to it manifesting because it had been a reality. The plan of salvation. Go to come, let us build a city. It is a carry blocks. He said, Sit down let's build a city and they gave access to demon spirits to begin to brood on their creativity they saw it happening and the bible says in chapter 11 from verse 5 that god came down they had not started building but the bible says god came down to see the city which the son of man had built it. they had finished it if you don't believe what i'm saying you will never do anything great. This is it. The spirit of God. With the raw material of your mind. Not business. Not job. Stay with you. Finish that work with him. That's why there is nobody who cannot rise. Your little one room. With roaches around. No problem. Use it as the place. Like the cave of Adullam. Start from there. It's unfortunate when you rise without knowing what you did because there is then no way you teach people he said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled listen you see this is what makes you confident in your results you know how they came and you know what to keep doing that's why you see ministries after 45 years still standing the people are not fools when you see great men like our father Bishop Oedipo and, and um, Papa uh, um, 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 Adeboe, you see all of them talk, you think they are arrogant they are not fools that's why Bill Gates remains the wealthiest man that's why all of these people come they replace him for a moment today he gets back again and all of them keep recycling among their circle it never goes anywhere because they know they have lost their ability to allow any other thing incubate negativism is the mystery behind the wealthy getting wealthier and the poor getting wealthier poorer because all they see keeps making sure they remain there the only thing they make the contact with and here are things that keep reprogramming like you have water cycle you have nitrogen cycle you have poverty cycle you have wealth cycle where things reinforce themselves again when i started working in the anointing my eyes did not see so much results so sometimes you need to push through but because i have made contacts with the result it has created a cycle you see that so you are not trying to get the power of god to move your mind has been indoctrinated it has become a stronghold that the power of god can move 
so the holy spirit comes through your mind like neuro parts they teach us in neurology that every time you think the brain can create pathways to repeat those thoughts again that's what happens to you lift your hands our time is gone but i truly truly want god to do much in your life this year he declared that it's a year of signs and wonders we are starting the seven days of fasting please don't miss it every night i'm going to be bringing mystery upon mystery and we're going to be praying that these things will push our lives forcefully to dimensions you never dreamt possible i stretch my hands towards you and i declare in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god may the spirit of wisdom not just the gift of wisdom the spirit the manifestation of the holy spirit that brings strategies to you i release that dimension in your life in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare inside overflow one two three those following online from tonight begin to birth creative solutions in the name of jesus by this impartation i declare that every mountain that stands before you on its encounter with the spirit of wisdom may it become a level playing ground in the name of jesus please keep standing there are people here who need to hand over their lives to christ jesus christ is the factor please keep standing let's honor those coming out now jesus christ is the reason and the only reason why the things we are teaching works he is the power behind creation he is the power behind prayer he is the power behind this knowledge are we together he said ye must be born again there are people scattered across this auditorium and around in the various overflows who are saying man of god i have been so blessed tonight but truly i have not handed my life over to jesus or there are people who are saying man of god I need to make my ways right with God. I have, I remember coming out to make an altar call, but as it is right now, I know that I've derailed from the path of the spirit and I want to be restored. Wherever you are, we have two minutes for you. Overflow three, you can walk to your projector stand outside. Overflow three, you can just walk to the front of your projector stand. Overflow one and two and those inside, please make your way quickly. You are making this decision. If you are outside, please run our time is gone i want to lead you to jesus god bless you you are inside this auditorium make your way to the front god bless you young man god bless you koinonia appreciate them they are coming make your way keep coming i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord they are thoughts of good and not of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end overflow one and two quickly Please let them rush if you are coming. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Let the Lord come and change your life. Don't sit down when you know that your way is not right with God. No one will force you. But I want you to make that decision for the sake of your destiny. Thank you, Jesus. Overflow 3, just walk to the front of your projector stand. If you are coming out, quickly, quickly, quickly join them. Man of God, I don't know if I'm saved or not. Join them. Join them quickly. Join them quickly join them quickly god bless you hallelujah join them quickly now i want to lead you she's coming please hurry up hurry up quickly hurry up quickly come stand now thank you so much for this great decision i want you to lift your right hand and say this after me passionately you're not reciting a poem say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god that you died for me join them tonight i hand my life over to you be my lord be my savior i receive your life into my spirit and i declare that from tonight until forever i belong to you amen keep your hands lifted jesus help them may your spirit that we have so much talked about and acknowledged even tonight rest upon them and in the name of Jesus Christ, may they rise from glory to glory. Give them a new experience. Lord, I pray that you authenticate their prayers. 
by granting them access to the spirit of truth i pray that your grace will keep them in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah god bless you thank you so much god bless you please return okay follow um the gentleman waving his hands all of you they'll take you outside and um you'll be back now please just to announce to us that um hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.